Hey guys, welcome to Brattles Gaming and to another episode of my Far Cry 5 community creation series. It is so good to be back on YouTube after a little bit of a break. As I usually seem to do, I always seem to post a couple videos and then I take a break. Uh, for whatever reason that may be, maybe it's because I'm busy in life, um, or whatever. Uh, unfortunately, for the last two weeks, or just prior to this, um, I was sick, uh, which wasn't fun, couldn't really talk, was in bed all the time. Uh, definitely the worst I've felt in terms of being sick for a while, probably since, I don't know, 2014 or something like that. Um, you know, n not really a serious illness or disease, you know, just one of those viruses or common colds that you catch um, from work, and then that seemed to uh, put me out for a while. I did intend to come back at the start of October and produce videos, but unfortunately that hit me in the head hard and it hit me in the head quickly, uh, but otherwise here we are now. And uh, I thought it would be very befitting if I was to post some horror themed inspired uh, maps from the Far Cry 5 arcade, very similar to what I did last October um, with the triple header videos of the, um, the Halloween maps. I think I did four Halloween maps uh, that month uh, in October last year. By Halloween, I just mean any sort of map on the arcade that kind of has a horror theme attached to it. And the first one that we're looking at here, as you can see through the very grim scenes, is Cannibal Cave by Extraman. Uh, this is a map that was created on the PlayStation, uh, but it has been ported over to the Xbox and PC versions of Far Cry via the Map Stopper 2 alias. So it's available on all three platforms, which is really good because it means that everybody in the Far Cry 5 community is able to play it. Now, as I do with these community creation series, I'm going to go through the pros and cons of this map. As I do with every community creations episode, the point of the series is just to promote people's maps, highlighting their talent and creativity, and hopefully exposing some ideas to yourself that you might be able to implement in one of your own custom map creations. So the first pro that I have for this particular map, and you will have already noticed it either in the cinematics or the gameplay uh, coming up after the cinematics have finished rolling through, is the atmosphere. The map is simply gorgeous, but unironically, or rather ironically, in a very unattractive way. The creator has really made a complete and comprehensive creation, Everything from the sound design of the map, such as what music and sound effects are used throughout the map, uh, to the specific micro detailing uh, in each section of the map, and just the general layout and setting makes this map a very tense and eerie experience throughout. It really invokes that sense of horror and hits the Halloween theme right on the head. Even if the creator didn't intend for this map to have a Halloween theme, it's easy to see that the attention to detail is specifically horror inspired. Now more on the details of the map. The god ray is signifying light coming from the sun into the cave through the cave openings uh, is yeah, really quite cool, um, but even on a more practical scale, the many torches lighting the insides of the cave really emphasize the veracity and volatility of the events taking place inside this cave. Whilst it definitely would be a very tense map if there was little to no lighting, I love the decision to include uh, different lighting throughout the cave, especially in the uh, areas where enemies are and even just the details, because it means that each section has its own sort of specific uh, lighting design, uh, but rather, more specifically, to really highlight the goriness of the micro details uh, that the creator has implemented, such as the heavy amount of bones, blood, dead bodies, and other worse for wear items. Now, the scripting is also on point in this map. There isn't too many like uh, slow motion events or anything uh, sort of more complex like that. But there are a lot of uh, character animations throughout the map. I know that isn't really scripting because character animations are simply just 
uh, kind of assets that you sort of place down on the map that AI will follow, or they should follow, but a lot of the time they don't, which can be very tedious whilst you're map making. But nonetheless, I do think the character animations in this map are very on point. Uh, in one scene which you would have seen at the beginning of the video, you see a guy just chopping up a dead body. A very grim scene, but one that really sets the tone of the map. And even though that isn't at the beginning of the map, you can definitely see how it set the tone for this video as, you know, a very horror-inspired Halloween-type theme map. Now, there's also some other animations where there are prisoners inside caves, or inside cages, rather. Cages inside caves, there we go, a bit of a tongue twister there. But you have uh, prisoners inside these uh, cages that are basically just weeping uh, because of their ordeal. I'm sure that anyone who was about to uh, have the ordeal of being eaten alive by other humans, they probably would be weeping as well or doing something else that was uh, quite negative. So uh, yeah, very good uh, character animations uh, throughout the map. You don't really just have AI, you know, like civilians or whatever, just standing in a cage, just talking casually to each other. You actually have them crying and uh, yeah, that sort of thing. Now the next pro is what I consider to be a unique approach by the creator to actually use the angels as enemies instead of zombies. Now, I believe that if you try to pair zombies with a Far Cry 5 cultist, that they're not compatible with each other, that they will attack each other, so that may be a reason why the creator chose angels instead of zombies. But nonetheless, I really do think this is a very fresh idea. Even though the angels were around before the zombies, I just see so many maps where the zombies are used in them, whether it's... There's not that many maps where the angels are used. Now, nothing against the zombies. I think the zombies are really cool, and I really do enjoy zombie maps. But I just thought it was really cool that the angels were used as sort of the zombie-like creatures instead of the zombies themselves. They create a really unique sort of uh, way that you have to try and approach the map, because... In this environment where the map is so claustrophobic because it is a cave, I believe the angels, are, well, they're really well suited to this environment. If you compare this to the Far Cry 5 open world of Montana, I don't believe the angels are very effective because the map is so open and in Far Cry 5 you of course have your full arsenal of weapons to choose from as well. Uh, including explosives and that sort of thing. So the angels are pretty easy to take down. Even in that mission, uh, I played it a really long time ago where you're in Henbane River and all these angels are rushing you from the uh, from the hills and that sort of thing. Uh, even that, even though it was a bit uh, sort of um, overwhelming, the angels probably weren't as difficult to take out in that because it was so open and you could sort of run around and that sort of thing. But in a claustrophobic environment like the caves in this map, the angels are a lot more of a formidable enemy. They're still quite weak uh, and pretty dumb, let's be honest, but nonetheless, uh, because there is often quite a lot of them in a closely confined environment and the player is restricted to only a handful of weapons to deal with them, the angels themselves definitely provide some really complimentary support to their cult human counterparts in this map, especially at the end of the map as pawns to the boss lady at the end. Uh, now I will break down that boss fight a little bit later on, it definitely is one of the uh, better boss fights I think in the game, uh, not in terms of the campaign but just in terms of uh, custom maps that I have played, in terms of just uh, the whole delivery of the boss fight, uh, but again I'll get onto that later on. Now the angels do have zombie like traits but they're arguably harder to kill than zombies as they are often only stunned before attacking you again and they chant spooky hallucinatory cries which is sure to intimidate anyone that gets on their bad side or even just playing through the map the fact that you can hear them sort of chanting all these sorts of uh, weird broken uh, sort of things it definitely sets the tone of the map as well and makes you feel uh, quite a bit on edge. Now I want to finish to the pros with the fact that the boss fight is so well balanced but is just a really great conclusion to the map. 
The map with all its twists and turns builds up beautifully to this crescendo sort of style, thrilling and well thought out or fought out boss fight. The boss lady, as I've been dubbing her, was actually a lot more difficult to take down than I originally intended, but this challenge was all the more satisfying when I was in fact able to eliminate her. You can actually see in the gameplay later on, there are some moments when I struggle and then I panic as you can see from my crazy jumping around, uh, but yeah, you'll be able to see that later on, it's pretty funny. Uh, but also not as funny when I was playing through it thinking I was about to lose the gameplay because I thought I was going to die. But nonetheless, I thought this part of the map was also really well crafted because the setting was so iconic. The massive mammoth or dinosaur bones created a great skeleton catacomb set piece. And this combined with the bright red and intense fiery appearance of the torches that lit up the area. And the reflections of the blood red water or blood, um, I don't really know what the creator intended for this to be, uh, but nonetheless was, you know, just as worthy a setting as the boss fight itself. It was a really, I guess, I don't know, in movies how you have like that grind finale sort of scene, uh, and you know, you want all the elements of the movie to come together in terms of, uh, I, I guess, the setting and all the other stuff. <laughs> Um, but yeah, as I mentioned earlier, having the angels in this map, which have zombie-like traits, but are also, you know, harder to kill to an extent than zombies, you know, because they are, I feel like they're a bit tougher in terms of their health, but then also the fact that they chant spooky sort of hallucinatory cries really complements not just the atmosphere of this map that they're in, but also their cult human counterparts as well. The angels are the perfect ally to boss lady as they look to swarm and consume you up close, whilst boss lady takes a ranged approach to taking you out. This combined with the fact that the setting of this boss fight is quite confined just like the uh, previous areas throughout the cave, but also not so confined that the player is still able to run to places where they can quickly sort of recuperate uh, and attack again, sort of do a little bit of a reset is what makes this a really great boss fight, a really well balanced boss fight but also just a grand finale to the map. Uh, I truly think it's the uh, perfect way to end the map and it just gives you that rush of adrenaline and achievement just before you reach your freedom. This will of course make more sense once you see the boss fight, hopefully it does make sense when you witness that or that you will be sticking around long enough to see the boss fight. I definitely recommend it. If you want, uh, because you're low on time, feel free to skip ahead to the boss fight and just be able to see the uh, the points that I'm uh, talking about in terms of uh, why I think the creator has done such a good job in crafting that boss fight. Perhaps it will even give you a good idea for your own custom map creation as well. Now with a map where I have praised it so much, it's often difficult to come up with any cons. I know cons are traditionally um, disadvantages or negative things, but I don't think they necessarily have to. I think that cons can also be uh, things that I think could improve or just suggestions for how I think this map might be able to be better. For example, more so for multiplayer, I don't know, adding an attachment to a gun or something like that. Something as simple as that. That's not really a negative thing of the map, that's just something that I think can be added to improve it. And I think cons uh, can also be short for considerations. I'm not sure if that's what a con is abbreviated by, but uh, yeah, I definitely think that it can be a consideration for the map maker. And also, going through these cons, I feel, can also help you guys as well in your own custom map creations, as I've kind of drummed on over and over throughout this video. Now, one idea I had for how this map could be even better was actually the option to be able to free the prisoners. And I know the cages that they're in are pretty solid set pieces, like pretty solid assets. There's no way that you can break those cages open, I believe. I'm pretty sure there are some alternative... Uh, cages in the um, in the editor that the creator could have used where upon you know smashing them or shooting at them the cage would open and then it would be able to release the prisoners now I don't think the AI may be that intelligent even if you were to open the um, the cage 
but I'm sure there's some sort of script that you can, uh, yeah, program to allow the prisoners, the prisoner AIs, to be able to escape. And a way you could take this even further is to actually have prisoners that are your allies that will fight alongside you once they're freed. I feel like this is just to increase that immersion that, you know, if you were going through a cave, um, personally, I would probably try to free people who are about to be eaten by cannibals rather than just walk past them as they're weeping. I feel like that would be pretty heartless. But I know other people would probably not because they wanted to survive and they feel like if they opened up that cage, they might be carrying dead weight uh, for the rest of their journey. Either way, whichever sort of uh, moral choice you choose, I just think that it would um, yeah, be a really, a really great way to uh, contribute to the world building of this map even further. Now, I've personally never tracked through a cave uh, especially a cave with openings that have uh, the rays of sun shining through them. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think that some of the god rays in this map are a little intense. They almost seem a little bit more like spotlights than they do the natural gleaming effect that you get from sun shining through trees and that sort of thing. But at the same time, I suppose they kind of give players uh, that emotional feeling of hope that you know they're trying to get out of this cave and that there is you know an outside that they've got to escape through and even at the end there is like a massive sort of god ray that shines at the players so it's almost like a sign of hope i suppose but at the same time i also do think it may be a little bit too intense but nonetheless i suppose that is personal opinion now you actually see uh right here this is sort of the hole that you have to jump through to get to the boss fight. Although I thought it was slightly confusing. I thought that hole was sort of like a dead end in a way that if I jumped down that I would die. But I didn't actually die. Uh, you know, the water is quite shallow, but I'm not really too sure if there's any falling damage or not as a modifier. I can't quite remember. But I would maybe make the water deeper, but also perhaps put some sort of indicator that the player has to go down the hole. Even something as trivial as adding maybe like a, a plank to the um, to the edge of that hole, and maybe that can also contribute as part of the world building, almost like part of the narrative where prisoners are made to walk that plank. That you know, this there's this narrative that the evilness of this imagined world is where the cannibal minions are forcing live prisoners down this hole. Uh, on the plank to confront the boss lady. Maybe there also could have been an animation where this was actually happening as well instead of just a room filled with enemies again just to give a little bit more variety. For example, a guard making a civilian who is in fear walking the plank. But otherwise, that wraps up another Far Cry 5 Community Creations episode here on the Brattles Gaming YouTube channel the first of a few horror maps I am featuring on this channel in time for Halloween. In the next few horror maps though, I'll try my best to shorten the commentary so you can be more immersed in the map, as I definitely feel a great thing a lot of creators do with these horror style maps is really nail the atmosphere, and I really want you guys to be able to soak this up as well without my commentary getting in the way. At the end of the day, you can play it anyway, so hopefully those of you who are watching still have your copy of Far Cry 5, but otherwise I can definitely upload another video with just the raw gameplay if that's what you guys want as well. Just let me know in the comment section. As always, be sure to give these maps a go on your respective platform, and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon if you're new around here. But with all that being said, I'm Bradles Gaming. I'm signing out now, and remember to have yourselves a great day. triumphant.